Hi, my name is Janet. I was an ordinand at St Melitis from 2015 to 2018 and I'm now a final year curate in the West Bolton team, which is in Bolton. You'll be unsurprised to hear. Today we're going to read from John chapter 6, starting at verse 60 and going through to the end. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He was speaking of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, for he, although one of the twelve, was going to betray him. I became a Christian in 2007. Now, I'd long held the belief that Christianity was just a load of nonsense. But my son was born in 2000, and I couldn't shake the feeling that there had to be more to life than what I thought there was. There has to be more to it than this. So I began to explore Buddhism and Taoism, and they were really interesting, but it didn't seem to fit. But I didn't even think to glance at Christianity. But early in primary school, my son, he asked if he could go to Sunday school with his best mate. But that meant going to church, and so we said, most definitely, no. But he pestered and he pestered, so off we went. And we thought, right, he's going to see how rubbish this is, how boring this is, and that'll be the end to it. Well, the rest is history. Part of the passage I read today from John reminds me of my early journey. We read that Jesus' teaching is difficult. Indeed, much of what he's been saying must have been so hard to get your head round. It's also quite clear that if he's going to go on pushing the authorities, it's only going to end up one way. So many of Jesus' disciples turn away. They refuse to go along with him anymore. Maybe some had come along to get something from Jesus. They didn't sign on to suffer for him. Maybe some just didn't see in Jesus who they wanted. This wasn't the Messiah they were expecting. But that's the thing with Jesus, isn't it? He isn't what anyone expects. To be a Christian, it's not accepting a philosophy or agreeing on a theory that's pretty sound. It is and always will be a personal response to Jesus. And although this personal response will be the most life-giving thing we can ever do, it can be difficult and it will be demanding. On the early part of my Christian journey, this was me. I could intellectually accept what I was learning about Jesus, but I struggled to commit. To commit, I knew, meant my life would be turned upside down. It would demand so much of me. Why on earth would I want to do that? It was tempting at times, like the disciples, some of the disciples that we read about in John, to just walk away. And yet here I stand. I'll sit. Peter's response to Jesus when he asked the twelve, do they want to leave too? Are just the most powerful words. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. 
to whom can we go? That was my realisation. This Christianity business, this was going to be demanding. It was going to throw everything up in the air. It was going to change everything. But I had met with Jesus. And after that, where else could I go? So this Lent, may this time of reflection remind us and reassure us all that as demanding as our lives as Christians can be at times, Jesus is and always will be all that we need.